now all along we have been talking about the strain as uh, observed strain is what we have been talking about right there are various reasons why you observe the strain okay let us look at what are the causes say I have a bar at 20 degrees the length was some L at 20 okay now I eat the bar and make it into 40 degrees now the bar length has increased to L 40. So, what is the observed strain? Observed strain would be L at 40 degrees minus L at 20 degrees divided by L at 20 degrees. So, there is some strain in this, in this bar because it has expanded due to a thermal change okay, change in temperature. So, does this mean there will be mechanical stresses induced in this bar? Does it mean there will be any stresses in this bar at 40 degrees? The answer is no because the observed strain is a sum of the mechanical strain plus the thermal strain plus there can be multitude of other reasons why a strain arises. For example, a humidity change in a gel can produce strains okay so that is called as a hydroscopic strain okay so such strains are also can be added up to get the observed strain okay for example in a piezo ceramic material the applied electrical field will produce a strain which is the observed strain due to a electrical field okay such electrical strains also can be added up here okay so but in this course we will be interested only in the mechanical strain and the thermal strains okay so the observed strain is the sum of mechanical strain and thermal strain and what enters the constitutive relation is only this mechanical strain should enter the constitutive relation okay so when i write sigma as lambda trace epsilon i should write it as the mechanical strain and not the observed strain mechanical strain okay because when I have other strains coming up due to other effects I have to be specific on what is the strain that I am using the constellation okay so it will be the mechanical strain that I have to use okay now having understood that the observed strain is a sum of mechanical and thermal strains let us look at different scenarios first let us look at what is the representation for thermal strain thermal strain is alpha delta theta into identity or alpha is coefficient of thermal expansion and delta theta is change in temperature. Okay. So, let us put this in, in the observed strain and you will get the mechanical strain as epsilon observed minus alpha delta theta identity. Okay. Now, let us consider two cases one case where I have a bar which is free to expand okay, where I eat this bar up I eat this bar up what will happen what will be the observed strain here the observed strain would be alpha delta theta identity if I assume that the expansion is isotropic and it is equal in all directions okay. So, the observed strain will be alpha delta theta identity okay. Now, what will be the mechanical strain then epsilon mechanical would be 0 from this expression here okay, which means there is no mechanical stresses developed because of this eating of this bar. Okay. On the other hand I take another bar and 
which is clamped at both the ends and I eat this bar okay what will be the observed strain observed strain would be 0 in this case, but mechanical strain is minus alpha delta theta identity remember this identity tensor means is 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 1 okay this minus alpha delta theta identity. So, what happens now if I eat the bar there is compressive stresses that are developed. So, the corresponding from this sigma mechanical stress would be 3 lambda alpha delta theta minus identity 2 mu minus alpha delta theta identity and I substituted for this is epsilon mechanical and trace of epsilon mechanical would be minus 3 alpha delta theta which I use in here for the expression lambda trace epsilon identity. So, summing these two up I will have minus 3 lambda plus 2 mu alpha delta theta identity would be the mechanical stress that is developed. That is I am assuming it is not only clamped along the axial direction, but I am assuming it is clamped along the x and z directions also. Okay. On the other hand if they are free to contract or expand the x and z directions what will happen is I will have epsilon observed will not be 0. If I allowed strains if it is free to expand in the y and z direction epsilon observed will only be 0. Okay. In that case I will have a different expression for the mechanical stress and mechanical strain. Okay. So, you have to understand that the observed strain is not what gets into the constellation it is the mechanical strain that gets into the constellation which is to get the mechanical strain you have to subtract from the observed strain the thermal strains, the hydrographic strains the electrical strains and so on. Okay.